third experiment of optics. Now we will be dealing with the convex lens and our aim will be to find out the focal length of a convex lens. Now, the ray diagram for the experiment that we are doing is as follows. This shows you the convex lens with optical center O. This is the focal length of this convex lens which we will be finding out when we start doing the experiment. If f is known, 2 f is automatically known. We will be again using the two needles. The first one acts like the object and the second one is just used to locate the position of the image. Now, if I keep the object needle between 2 f and f, then according to the rules, I should be getting its image beyond 2 f after convergence. So, these two rays which go something like this, after convergence, they meet at this point. It means, I will be getting the image of the object needle at this position, but I can only see this image in order to locate it and find out its position on the meter scale, I use this image needle and I keep on adjusting this image needle till the tip of it is exactly in line with the image tip. After doing the experiment for different different values of the object distance, I will be getting different different image distances. Now, a table like this will be received which will be based basically on this formula. This is the lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. In case of convex lens, the object distance is always considered to be negative and the image distance v is always considered to be positive. The reason being image is always formed on the other side of the lens. Now, every time you take the observation, you will be maintaining the same value of lens position. By adjusting image and object needle, you will be getting different different values of object and image distance. Using these two values and applying the lens formula, you will be able to find out finally the value of focal length. This is the method of finding out focal length by the analytical method or by taking the average. If I use the graphical method for doing the same, I will be once again plotting the graph between v and u, u being negative because u is taken in the direction opposite to the incident ray, v will be positive and I will be getting a curve like this. I will be bisecting this curve at 45 degree and I will be dropping from this point two perpendiculars on v and u axis respectively. The two values of v and u that you get now will be used in the mirror formula in the lens formula to find out the focal length. Similarly, you can plot another graph. This is showing us 1 by v and 1 by u graph, but it comes out to be a straight line. Now, in this you can see there are two points where the graph is intercepting the axis. This or this can help you to give the value of the focal length. Excuse you ma'am, how can we distinguish between a convex and a concave lens just by looking at it and not touching it? Okay, that is a very appropriate question. If you cannot feel the surface of the lens, the best way in which you can distinguish a convex lens from any other object like a concave lens or a plane object, transparent object is, you keep this lens over any written object or on a printed page. If you see the image to be slightly enlarged, you can take that the lens you have is a convex. If the image is diminished, the lens you are having is the concave one. But if the print neither gets diminished nor gets enlarged, the object you have may be like a plain glass lab or simple glass. So, now let us move on for doing this experiment on the optical bench. Let me show you the setting for finding out the focal length of this convex lens. 
This is a convex lens and you can easily find it out by touching it. At the center it will appear to be thicker as compared to the edges and also it will give me the enlarged image of whatever object lies beneath it. Now this needle will act as an object. Whereas the needle on the other side of the lens this will act like the image needle which will help me to locate the position of the image. Now again my first aim will be to find out the rough focal length of this convex lens and also to remove the parallax. Excuse me ma'am, hmm? unlike in the mirror experiment why have we placed the needles on either side of the lens? And okay the logic being if this is the object then its image, the real image will be casted on the other side in an inverted fashion over here. So if I want to locate it, I need the image needle on the other side of the lens because the image is real and inverted as well as on the other side of the lens. Now students will try to move this object away from this lens so that at one point I get the tip of the object well coinciding with the tip of the image needle. Although I am moving the object in this case but you can very well move the image as it will mean one and the same thing because our aim is to make the tips of the object and image needle one over the other. Now remember you have to side by side see that when there is no parallax and both of the needle are moving together. Now I have almost reached that position. The only thing is that the tip is not meeting the tip for which I will use the screw to slightly lower down the object point. Now even if I move my head left or right in respect of the object both the tips are moving together both either to the left both either to the right. Okay. Now the view that you are getting in the camera is exactly what we are heading for and this you can see that the object needle is exactly coinciding with the tip of the image and there is no parallax even if you move your head either sides of the object. Now in order to take other readings what you are supposed to do is you have to keep this object needle between F and the center of curvature you can take it anywhere in between these two readings. Any of the position you can choose once you fix the position of the object needle you should ideally get its image beyond C on the next side. So this being my image needle I will be moving it away from C and I will stop wherever I find both the needles facing tip to tip. Now here I can easily see that both the object as well as the image needle are coinciding, coinciding tip to tip. So can you see it now? Yes ma'am. So basically this gap is your object distance u while the remaining gap between the lens and the image needle being your image distance v. You can use both of them in a formula to find out the focal length. Now students, I am going to show you two graphs which I have drawn using the same V and U values that you have just now obtained on the optical bench. Now this graph will show you 1 by U versus 1 by V. 
obviously this bears a negative sign whereas 1 by v will go positive. When I plot the readings I get a straight line graph. This graph is actually making an intercept on the x as well as on the y axis. If I take the x axis intercept it will give me 1 by u which can be equated to 1 by f. The reason why I am not taking 1 by v in this formula is that at this point 1 by v which is on the y axis is equal to 0. Similarly coming on the y axis I can take this value of 1 by v to be equal to 1 by f as 1 by u is 0 at this point. So, 1 by u can be equated to 1 by v to get the inverse of focal length. Now, let us come to the second graph. This is a graph of v versus u. u is negative as the object distances are taken negative in convex lens whereas, v is positive as the image is formed on the other side. Now, this will come out to be a curve like this. It is drawn with a free hand. You have to bisect this curve from the origin making a 45 degree angle and at this point where it meets the curve drop down two perpendiculars on either of the axis. This and this value when substituted in the formula 1 by v minus 1 by u will enable me to calculate 1 by f. So, students now you know three different methods of calculating 1 by f and finally, f if you have taken the v and u readings through optical bench. So, we are through with calculating the focal length of the convex lens.